looking into why I can change the five chemistry practical preference. So the the part A is what volumetric analysis, also known as titration. So and then we are giving them using specimen A and B. The specimen A we have there is hydrogen chloride. That's an acid, a strong acid for that matter. And then the specimen B is what sodium hydrogen trioxide carbonate four. And from the specimen B, specimen B is formed from the reaction between H2CO3, that is hydrogen trioxide carbonate four, plus what sodium hydroxide. So sodium hydroxide is a strong base, while H2CO3 is a weak acid. So the reaction between a strong base and then a weak acid is going to give us a what a basic salt. So that NaHCO3 is a salt, but it's a basic salt. So with that, it has a proper in solution, it has a property of, of a base. Yeah, that's property of base. So that is why it is so that's why NaHCO3 is used as what specimen B, which is a base in that place. Now let's look at um part B. This part B is qualitative analysis, also known as what salt tests. Or sort analysis okay so we are given specimen c and the specimen c is a mixture of copper sulfate plus glucose so the two sample the two sample they are in a powder form and they are mixed together copper sulfate plus glucose so that is what the specimen is all about now let's look at the part a and that is all titration also known as what volumetric analysis remember that the part a is just about the specimen a and b so now let's explain. Specimen A is what HCl. This HCl you are going to pour inside your burette, and that's an acid. It's a strong acid inside your burette, and your burette is either maybe 50 cm cube. Yeah, 50 cm cube. That's the best standard burette for you to use. So for the specimen B, that is sodium hydrogen trioxide carbonate four, which I said is a salt, but is a base. Like it has the property of base when it is in solution. When is the solution and is a basic source, not an acidic source. So then you think an acidic source because it has hydrogen inside. But not knowing that um, an, um, a weak acid reacts with a strong base, then they are going to give us a basic salt. So that's why we have that. So the solution of this guy, this specimen B, if you pour it, I mean, you are going to put it inside conical flax using your pipette. And your pipette is actually going to be of 20 cm cube or 25 cm cube. Any one of the two is allowed. Now we have the indicator. The indicator you have to use any type of um, titration is methyl orange because methyl orange is good, is a best indicator, a suitable indicator used whenever you are what, whenever you are titrating a strong acid together with a what, with a big weak base. So you use methyl orange. Now looking at the methyl orange now, whenever you add this methyl orange to what, to to sample B. Which is what NaCO3. Remember that is usually going to be maybe if you are like maybe two drop of uh, methyl orange to what to the B. So when you had it there, the color you are going to observe is color yellow. So if you are now titrating that solution with HCl, that's an acid. So you are going to have that color yellow is going to change to orange. And also at the end point, that is when then this thing occurs neutralization. So whereby the acid has neutralized the base. So the color you're going to observe is either orange or faint pink. And also, if you had excess acid to the solution, which solution? Solution B. Solution B or specimen B. So if you had excess hydrogen chloride or hydrochloric acid to that solution, you're going to have the color as red. So ensure that it's not in excess. If you are performing the experiment or the practical for this particular titration or part A, any one of it. So you have some things you should take notes. The first thing is that you should try to rinse your pipette, burette, and conical flax very well using the still water. Rinse it properly. And also, you should take your readings from the high level. So ensure to do that very well. And also, you should use a white tie under the flax. Which flax? Conical flax. A white tie is like a white, a, a white tie. So that white tie is going to allow you to figure out the color change that you observe when you are doing your titration. You are going to put that your conical flask on top of that tie. You know the reflection from the color of the of the solution inside the conical flask is going to show you clearly. Like you are going to have a clear picture of what color are you seeing in your conical flask on the white tie. 
so you have to use that and also you have to record your bullet reading correctly so please record your bullet reading correctly and remember that it's going to be in um, two decimal places so now i'll be coming up with some um, predicted questions likely questions that at least it is around 85 percent to 90 percent sure that if you should study those questions very well majority of it is going to come out from the exam like the one i've done before for the biology practical for the um agricultural practical and then um together, together with the animals boundary i think i'm physics as well so a lot of students have come to me and said it really helped them in the exams and you saw the so many questions that came out from me this and that i'm assuring that these questions i'm going to write on the board as well for this chemistry practical a lot of it is going to come out in exam so take your time to study very well because it's going to benefit because, because you are going to benefit from it now that is the 90 percent predicted questions so i see this question very well so take your time to read it so this question i'm very sure actually this big part the part b we have even the only thing that that may actually change in your exam is maybe maybe the value maybe the mass of hcl from the question you are seeing on your screen maybe the mass of hcl then together with the the, the mass of the nhco3 so maybe that can be the only thing that will change but surely expect that concentration of a in more per dm cube will surely be come out from, from your exam the same thing with concentration of b in more per dm cube percentage purity we also we also come out the volume of co2 liberated will definitely come out because of what in this equation of the reaction there's a liberation of what of co2 so expect that as well the amount of sodium ion present and the amount of h hydrogen ion present and also maybe the amount of chlorine ion present so that one too might also come out so now ensure you watch this video to the end because you're going to gain a lot from this video so now let's look at this table although this table has been experimented later today so the value i got when i experimented it was this so the my my final breath reading for my rough titration was 24.00 Zero. so 24.00 so that was my rough final breath reading for the rough title 24.00 and my initial breath reading when i started the titration was 0.00 so and then you know you are going to subtract for you to get the volume of acid you are going to subtract it so and that's going to be 24.00 so for the first titration after the row for the first titration was 23.80 so i have my first titration as 23.80 then i started with my initial as also 00, 0 as well then my volume of acid used by time we subtract we still have it as 23.80 as well so my second title my second title value for the final bullet reading was 23.70 when i did it there so I still have it as 23.70. I started with 0, 0.00 as well. Then by the time you subtract it, the volume of acid used will still be 23.70. So my third titration then was 33.80. 33.80. Although I started from I started from my initial breath reading was from 10.0. That was, what, that, that was where I started from 10.0. So by the time you subtract this, you are still, you, 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 you will get 28. Sorry, by the time you subtract 10 from 33.80, so that will be 23.80. So after the subtraction, I have it as 23.80. So those are my title value. So now, the, now look at this title value now. I'm very sure that for this year, YX25. Chemistry practical. The, the title value you should be getting should not go within this range. Yeah, it should not go within this range. Maybe the range of 23.8, 23.75, so, sorry, 23.7, 23.8.9, and the maximum should be 24.0. So if your own is now going above 24, maybe, maybe I guess 24.5.9, 25. Or oh, 26 that means we are doing something different from what Swag instructed us to do so now after having this title value this bullet reading on the board 
Then the next thing to do from the question, now you can read the question. The question says that you should put A into the bullet, then titrate it against 20.0 or 25.0 CMQ portion of B using metal lowering as an indicator. Yes. Then tabulate your reading. I've tabulated my reading like this. Then you have to calculate the average volume of acid use. I'm reading the question here. Then you have to calculate the average volume of acid use. So now let's go by calculating the average volume of acid use. So the average volume of acid use is now going to be the average volume of acid use. Average volume of acid use. So it's going to be that will be my can see that these three values they are closer to each other than this my rough tighter. So ignore the rough tighter, don't use it. Then that's going to be the the first tighter. Okay, you can just write first the second tighter and then the third tighter. Remember that the word average means you are going to look for the something like the mean. So over three. So by the time I had this value together, then that will be 23.80 plus what? 23.70 plus 23.80. So everything divided by what? 3. And finally, the answer is going to give me, that will be 23.767 23 centimeter cube. So after getting the average volume of acid used, which is what 23.765 centimeter, then let's move to the B part. The B part says that determine the concentration of A in mole per dm cube. And we actually know that concentration of A in of A in mole per dm cube is equal to the concentration of A in gram per dm cube. All over the molar mass of A. The molar mass of what? Of A. So now we are asked to find the concentration of A in mole per dm cube, but we don't know the concentration of A in gram per dm cube. But why? We also don't know the molar mass of A. Now let's work it out. Now from here, they said A from the beginning, they said A is a solution containing 1.83 gram ACL per what? Per 500 cm cube. I remember that the unit for this is what gram divided by dm cube. Can you see that now? From here now. So we can actually say that the gram is what 1.83 gram all over the dm cube. But we are given a cm cube. That will be 500 all over 1000. So this will be in dm cube. So if we, if we should do this mathematics expression like this, it's going to be 1.83. And that's going to be what divided by 500 all over what 1000 and actually it's going to be 1.83 times 1000 over what 500 so if i should divide this this is a five year one five year two so if i should do this that means i'm going to have it as 1.83 times two and finally 3.66 gram per dmq yeah so this is three. This is three. Three point six six. Three point six six gram per dm cube. So this three point six six gram per dm cube is, is the word concentration of A in gram per dm cube. And now let's also calculate the molar mass. This is the concentration of A in what in gram per dm cube. In gram per dm cube. So now let's look. Now let's calculate the molar mass of HCl. Remember that the the HCl is our acid and that's the A. So molar mass of what? A. And that is what? Hydrogen HCl. It's a hydrogen is what? 1 plus. And our Cl is 35.5. And that's going to be what? 36.5 gram per mole. Gram per mole. So we have the molar mass as what? 36.5. Gram per mole. So from here we can now substitute this value we got from this condition in of A in gram per dm cube, which is 3.66. We can substitute it here and also substitute this molar mass of A, which is 36.5 
we can also substitute this here. So if we do that, then our concentration of A in MOP and GMQ, <coughs> concentration of A in MOP and GMQ will be equal to 3.66, 3.66 gram per DM cube. You can, you can put the unit, you might not put it all over what 36.5. So by that will be 0 0.100 molarity. So always leave it in three decimal places. Either you write it 0 0.100 molarity or you write it as 0 0.100 mole per DM cube mole per dm cube you can also leave it like that so i'll be stopping this video here um then in the next video i will start from concentration of b in mole per dm cube so if you need the part b of this video i mean the continuation of this video so type it under the comment section that you want the part b of this video then i will share it to you so that you can also study the way i solve these remaining questions starting from concentration of b in mole per dm cube in my part b the next video thank you so much